Hey everyone, welcome to another video. So today I'm going to be doing a video on Diana. So Diana is the champion that I feel like at the moment is very, very strong. And I actually recommend it to people of all ELOs. I'm playing this game currently at about, this is like a D1 or master tier level. The mid laner I'm versing actually finished, you know, like 200, 300 LP Grandmaster last season. So overall my MMR is really high on this account. So I'm in like master tier, Grandmaster tier games. But yes, although I'm in a high elo game, a lot of the skills and everything I'm going to teach you in this game will translate when in your own games. Um, doesn't matter what the elo. So this is the champion I recommend for like silver, gold. And the, and the reason I recommend this champion um, is because it's mechanically very simple. You can still learn a lot of mid fundamentals with it. And I just think overall it teaches you a lot of great mid fundamentals into, if you want that aggressive style, if you want to play that aggressive style. So let's dive straight in, guys. The rune choice, I've been talking to a few pro players who love Diana, and the rune choice I like to go is obviously Conqueror, Presence of Mind, really important, Legend Tenacity or Alacrity, depending if you need that extra tenacity, and then Coup de Gras, and then Secondary, this is where I differ a little bit, instead of going the Domination Tree, I like to go Stopwatch and Biscuits, and the reason Stopwatch is that it just allows you to get your Zonyas um, much faster, because obviously you're saving 600 gold, and then obviously Biscuits is re really good for laning phase, uh, Ignite TP. So this is something that is just preference. And lower elos, I would probably recommend going Ignite. I would only take te Teleport probably in games, in lanes where you feel like they're going to be really, really difficult. And you're not going to be able to use your Ignite in lane for a long time. So again, majority of the time, Ignite. This is something you guys I re recommend kind of experimenting with in your own games as well. So now, diving straight in. What we're going to do is I'm going to try and be... You know, break down this video in the sense that, like, break it down into steps and, and the key things that you need to do in order to win lane or and translate your lead on Diana. And so what we're going to do, I'm probably going to go over two VODs, a one full VOD, and then at least the landing phase of a second VOD to show you versus a range versus a melee. And this one's actually Diana versus Ari. And I've got, if we look at the team compositions here, we're versing an Elise, an Ari, um, we have Elise in Diana. So pretty, both uh, teams have a really strong mid jungle, versing a Camille top, got a Soraka top as well. So straight away when I'm entering into a game as Diana, what I, I'm, I love to think about is I like to think about, okay, what is this jungle, given the jungle that I'm versing, Okay, first of all, I think about, okay, what is their level 2 gank possibility? Well, Elise is a champion that can potentially level 2 gank. It's not the best, more of a level 3, but it is p possible. So generally, you'll find me, I just lean onto the onto a side of the lane in the early game, um, just so I can prevent that level 2 from happening. And in, in most Diana vs. Um, range matchups, you want to be letting yourself get pushed in, remain high HP. Actually, we'll, we'll just get into that. Better to just show you rather than explain it. So now... And we both have Ignite mid, so there's no utility advantage, and that's the other thing you need to think about. You need to think about if there's a Teleport, or if there's Ignite, and how you're going to abuse it. But we have, both have Ignite, so it's going to be Combat Spell versus Combat Spell. Now, as Diana, the biggest mistake I see when I've, I've actually coached quite a few Diana mains at low elos is that they just, they just mindlessly cue the wave and just start auto-attacking. And the problem with that is that what's going to happen, you're going to find the wave when you're around level 2, is that the wave's going to be on this side of the lane. But what's wrong with that is that, so when you, you're level 2, level 3, especially when you're level 3, which is your power spike, you're not going to have any room to be able to chase down the guy in the lane and take good trades. And you're actually going to, because you're a melee champion as well, it's going to be a lot harder for you to walk up and auto-attack creeps when you're so deep in the lane. So you're going to be vulnerable, It's going to be you're going to take more poke, and also you're not going to have that kill threat at level 3 because he's going to be under his tower. So what most of the time what I like to do is just auto-attack one or once or twice just to make sure that I can auto attack these minions and I really want to get shoved in ideally levels one and two so this is just an overall um, my this is the way I like to to go about Dinah and again notice here in the early game here I'm trying to stand behind the minions because I want Ari to use his Q and actually did clip this minion on the back end because I want Ari to be pushing to me around level two level three now Generally, um, again, I'm really hesitant to use my Q on the on the creeps here. Yes, I could have just used my Q, but what would that do? It would start pushing these these minions. It would hit all of them. And it could again potentially push um, towards Ari, and I really don't want to do that. So I actually walk up, knowing that Ari's Q was on cooldown from before, so I'm able to get that. Just walk up and auto attack that creep. And I'm really really happy now that because Ari's auto attacking, Ari's um, pushing me in. So I, what I like to do is just. Be very, very conscious of the wave position. So, in terms of Qs, in terms of using Q in lane, there's either two things I want to be doing. I either want to be using my Q to thin the minion wave so it doesn't build up too big and so he, Ari can't poke me under tower. 
in the meantime, though, if I have, you know, I'm sitting on full mana, I generally just want to be queuing Ari as long as I know that it's not going to prevent the minions from pushing into me. So just constantly looking to queue Ari when she walks up to CS. And I actually do this all throughout the, uh, at, all throughout the lane, which um, you'll see in a second as well. So I'm just trying to use my Q as much as I can. I'm poking Ari. I don't want to take much damage. I'm really, really happy um, for Ari to let me push me in level 2 and level 3. It's going to make me quite um, easy. And look at that. Actually, just go back in a little bit here. So Ari actually pushes me in right now. And what do I do? So I know that Ari's going to walk up any second to last hit this minion with, his, with her auto attack. And look what I do. I time my Q perfectly. Bang. Because she has to stop. Her character actually has to stop for her to hit this minion, so I'm able to hit land cues, and that's what I'm going to be doing constantly throughout this lane. And it's okay to miss a few CS in the early game, because this ties into creating potential all-in opportunities when you're really helpful. And a huge thing that you need to understand when playing these sorts of champions, whether it's like, you know, Fizz or Diana, it's okay, levels 1 and 2, to, to, to give CS to conserve HP. Because if I trade too heavy, heavy levels 1, 2, and even level 3, tr trade, too, trade too heavy and I lose a bunch of my HP, what's going to happen? My health, my HP bar is going to be around half HP, or maybe I've already had to use both my, my health pots, whatever. What that's actually going to do is that when the wave is in a good position and I am ready to use my Q, uh, um, dash with my E, and then W and chasing down the lane with my Conqueror and Ignite, then... I'm going to be a lot more hesitant to do that because all it will take then potentially is one or two cues from Ari. I mean, an EQ onto Ari and she could potentially have kill threat onto me. And I don't want that to be the case. I want to stay healthy. And that's a really good solid principle that you can apply when you're playing any of these styles of champions. But specifically, it's very important on Diana. So I'm really happy with the way this early lane is going, going right now. In my mind, I'm already think that, thinking that Elise is most likely topside, doing starting red to go, to go topside. And now she can be active in the river because it's post tw 2 minutes 40. And what do I do here? Just use my CS there, just um, in my Q there, just to make sure I actually get that cannon creep because I didn't want to miss the, the cannon creep there. I'm in this really, really good spot. And now look how vulnerable this Ari is. She's in this lane. Lee Sin's into the into river here. She she has to be scared for so many reasons. If I can, you know, if she uses a Q on the minion wave, I'm going to be able to jump onto her any second. So I just want to be constantly palming, poking with Q whenever I can like that, and keeping it in this nice, nice little pocket here. And Elise shows top, so I'm consciously thinking, all right, Elise is going to be topside for the next while. And look at this. Actually, let me go back a little bit. Look at this. Look how I, I stand here now. Notice where I'm standing, guys. I know that Ari has to walk up and look to CS his minion. So what, what happens when you stand like this? And this is what I, I want you guys to do. Again, this is all just my specific strategy on Diana and the way I like to do it. Again, let them push in level 1 and 2. Keep the wave here. And then what happens? I'm able to do this. I'm leaning on the bot side knowing that Elise is shown. He's already shown, but he's 100% going to be on the top side right now. And now by doing this, and this guy, given that this guy has no idea what he's doing with waves, I'm able to just sit here and make Ari make a choice. Do you want to throw your Q? on these minions, or do you want to throw your Q onto me, preparing, because, you know, Ari knows I'm going to be using my Q and looking to use my Q on E on her any second right now. So this is the beauty of wave manipulation. You can put yourself in really favorable positions, because Ari doesn't want to walk up all the way up here, try and throw a Q all the way through these creeps, because then I can just all in her down the long lane. She's still a little bit scared of Lee Sin, but I think Lee Sin actually just showed bot side. So this is the beauty, and this is how to abuse um, the wave position. If I was standing back here, then Ari wouldn't be scared at all because it would be a lot harder for me to land a Q. And again, it would be harder for me to... Um, there's no real choice for her to make because she could just sit back here and Q these creeps without me even being in range to Q her. So that's why I'm standing out quite aggressively like this. And what do I do? As soon as she Qs like that, I throw my Q onto her. So she takes the trade. But that's actually screwing her lane even more because it's just being stuck in this annoying little position for her. Yes, I'm missing a bit of CS, but again, I'm. this is allowing me to uh, to really exert a lot of pressure onto this Ari, do whatever I want. Again, waiting for the minions to get low, and whenever the minions, because uh, I saw these minions here, I thought she was going to walk up and queue it potentially, but anyway, I threw my queue and I end up hitting her anyway. And notice I'm just kind of hovering on the bot side of the lane quite a bit, and I know now that I've got a, a, build, a, a bit of a, a wave building out um, because it's crashed, and um, it's going to be slow pushing to her. So now, so I have a few options going back here, actually. Let me let me go back a little bit. 
So here, when I know that this is slow building into me, a slow building into Ari like this, because obviously what's going to happen, Ari pushes level one and two, it crashes into the minion wave, and then it's going to start slow pushing out to Ari. What you want to be doing is deciding, okay, do I want to ride this way? Do I want to like look for a heavy trade knowing that I've got a bunch of minions and then, you know, sacrifice my HP that go for it, but go for a quick reset knowing that Ari is going to have to collect all this farm? Or do I just want to play slow maybe and just play for the minions, stick around for a while, poker under tower with Qs? Or do I want to get this wave in and then potentially look for a roam or get some deep vision or whatever? Like I have a lot of options here, but what my intention here was here was just to kind of um, get as much poke on as Ari as possible, knowing that she doesn't have a teleport, and kind of make it difficult for her to get a reset. And then, what? I, luckily, I'm leaning on the bot side of the lane already, so they go for a gank onto me. And again, Ari's... Dinah's actually quite difficult to gank. So, Dinah, if you're leaning on the correct side, you're playing with your waves, it's very difficult to, to, to gank. So, you're quite tanky with your Doran's ring, you get your shield from your W, and you have double dashes, so it's very hard, and we end up getting a nice little kill there. And what's important to note, guys, is that Ari blue flash. So, in my mind, especially when you're playing Dinah, you need to be super, super conscious of um, the enemy mid laner's flashes, because now I know she's pre-6, has no flash, That's that means she basically has no form of self peel. the only form of self peel she has is her charm, that's it. So, so look at how I, I look at the wave like this, I know that this wave is actually really bad for me, I need to come back and, and um, break this, kill these minions, so it actually crashes into tower and I don't lose a bunch of farm. So I walk back, quickly get it, and then get it, a reset off. So now, the build path I suggest majority of the time on Diana, and what I, I've been talking to a, a few pro players about, is this is build path where you go double Dorans and then you go straight into Nash's Tooth. The double Dorans, the intention of the double Dorans is to give you enough tankiness and HP to be able to, um, to I guess, get you through the early portion of the game, given that you can have no resistances by going Nash's second. So that gives you that bit of extra tankiness, especially with your W. And then also, the reason I get a Null Magic Mantle is because I'm versing a lot of hard CC. I'm versing an Elise and an Ari. And Null Magic Mantle will just make me extremely a a tanky, given my W, my double Dorans with the HP on them. And it's just going to make me really hard to kill. So I just like to sit on that Null Magic Mantle, and then I'm going to build towards, either finish my Mercs or build towards my Nash's Tooth. So now, what do I do? I pan my camera on my way back. I'm, I'm assessing, okay, what's going on here? Ari has a bit of tempo with me. What's going on in the side lanes? Um, which side lane is winning? Ideally, where do I want to put my ward? And I end up timing flashes here, 920 mid, 920 mid. Uh, or 9 mid, actually, sorry, 9 mid, 9 mid. And then, um, now I'm consciously thinking, well, Ari is super vulnerable right now. This is where I could potentially look to take some really aggressive trades if I want to. And then I see... Uh, uh, Elise here on the map as well, so I know mid's an isolated 1v1. So I land that Q on her, and notice what I'm doing. Notice how I'm not just sitting all the way back here. I'm sitting very aggressively, making Ari make a choice. Do you want to throw your abilities on the wave, or do you want to take a heavy trade with me? And again, as soon as she throws a Q like that, I'm looking to jump on her, but she's not really giving me the opportunity. She's tethering me quite well. But again, she's... um. She's really, really struggling because, uh, and and this actually, I want to use this opportunity to talk about why I actually don't think Ari's that good. So if Ari goes even in lane with a champion like Dinah like this, she's gonna, it's gonna be so difficult for her to navigate. If she doesn't get pressure in a lane, she can't really do anything because she just gets outscaled by a champion like Dinah. She's so squishy and she can't, and the thing with Di um, Ari is that you can't build defensives. You need to build full damage because your base, your scaling on your abilities are so low that um, that you need to build full AP. So you actually get just one shot, and Dinah's very good against squishies. So I have a decision here. Which side do I want to pink? I really didn't want to pink my, put my pink top side because I didn't want to play towards a Soraka top. I'm like, let's just leave Soraka on an island. Let's play towards bot side. Even though bot side were losing, I feel like it was a little bit harder for me to play top side. But the reason I pink here is because um, the dot was already pink. So generally, you want to have one side you want to play to, one riv one side of the river you generally want to control. I decided that it was bot lane this game, given that Dragon was up, and I can't really... I mean, Soraka has no kill threat on Camille. But what do I do? I see at least topside, so I end up um, trying to potentially look for a, uh, a bit of a counter here. Knowing that Ari... I mean, Ari has a bit of time to show mid, but it's a cannon wave, so it's going to take a long time. Something to think as well when you're playing Diana is that you really don't want to be missing too much CS because items are very, very important on Diana. But thinking about Diana being an assassin, she really does benefit a lot from these these sorts of early river skirmishes, especially when I have flash because I'm so mobile and I spike so early with my double with my double Dorans post first base that these fights are actually quite good for me. The problem is as well, Ari can't follow me into River knowing that she has no flash and she can just get chased down by me. 
The other reason I went for this room is because I know mid was a canaway, so it takes a lot, quite a long time for Diana, I mean for Ari to actually clear, and most mid laners to clear canaways. So he actually wasn't sure if Lisa was going to be able to kill Camille, and um, he ends up not needing me, which was a little bit annoying, because uh, again, this whole time I could have been punishing Ari, but it is what it is. It's better be, to be safe than sorry, and hover for those, especially for those top dives like that. Now... Again, I'm still conscious. She has no ult. She has no uh, flash, which means she's she's very vulnerable. So ideally, I haven't been able to punish her yet because I went for that roam. That was the choice I made. But um, as long as you're thinking about the, your potential options and who's vulnerable. Again, in League of Legends as a mid laner, you always need to be thinking about one or two things. One, who threatens me? Two, who do you threaten? Okay, this is dependent on itemization, summoner spells, level of mobility, CC, etc. Now... I see Ari get my pinks here. So what do we know? Well, we know Elise is dead. Their bot lane has push. And Elise is going to be coming out most likely going back onto bot side here. I am. I don't feel safe going onto this uh, onto this Ari, knowing that I think the way she the way Ari's playing right now, I'm thinking. Well, most likely Elise is in the area. I'm I'm quite. I'm a little bit scared here. So what do I do? I just leave him. Let him get the pink. Because again, I want to be playing and taking extended trades. And if you want to take extended trades, guys, you got to know that it's an isolated one v one. You got to know that you have the time to take that trade. If I were to jump onto this guy, QE onto this guy. You know, and I can't actually chase him if I don't know where Elise is. And this is why it's very important to not just be aware of where the enemy jungler is, but where your jungler is. And you know, I know that my jungler is not going to be able to back me up. So it's just going to be this weird potential scrappy fight where it's just not the right time for me to look for an all-in. So I just ward over the ramp there to have a side to lean on. And then, um, and then just play safe for a little bit here, thinking that, and I'm like, well, then I was thinking, oh, I feel really scared because I don't know where Elise is, and then I saw top scuttle spawn, I'm like, maybe Elise is actually top side, because I walled that ramp there, so thinking that Elise most likely um, is, is, is top side, so I'm leaning onto bot side, but for some reason, Elise must have either went over Blast Cone into river like that, or around here, and um, was able to, to you know, he, he failed the gank, but it was, a, it was a good gank by him. So now, um, I'm, I have no vision, so it's really hard for me to look for all-ins on this guy. So I just have to be patient and, and really just poke with Qs. That's all I can do right now. And that's a massive mistake I actually see a lot of Diners players do, is that they don't, they aren't patient, and then they constantly look for, like, these QE trades. And then, yeah, they just, and then the enemy jungle comes, capitalize on, capitalizes on it, and then they just, like, end up trading kills one for one. And I, that's just not the way I like to play Diner. I like to play the game very calculated. And then, look, I wait. I be patient now. My jungler's on the map. Um, my jungler's in on the river. I try and pull Ari in. We blow her 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 ultimate, and my my AD carry and support kind of clear vision in the river. So the reason I'm okay trading ult for ult is that I know if she doesn't have ultimate, she's extremely vulnerable because my E. I, my, I mean, my E is this insane gap closer, which is not an ultimate. So I can always threaten her as long as she doesn't have ultimate. So I'm I'm happy to blow her ult like that. So this game's going really really good for me. I'm constantly. I'm um, getting pressure on Ari. I'm exerting pressure around the map. I'm scaling up. I'm not getting punished. Ari's not really being able to do anything. And I'm just constantly playing with my jungler. Because as a principle, guys, assassins are good in 2v2s. And mages are good in 1v1s. Generally, a lot of the time. Because uh, uh, mages tend to um, outrange and want slow, slow, short trades. Whereas assassins want big, bursty plays and... Um, and they want these chaotic river skirmishes and things like that. And so that's why I'm constantly looking to back and pl back up and play around my jungler because I know that if Elise shows here, it's going to be good because Ari can't follow. Ari has no ult and we can just 100 to 0 Elise. So I'm constantly looking to play around my jungler and exert my pressure around the river. Dinah isn't a champion like Fizz where you can roam as well as Fizz. You can't roam as well as Fizz, but again, you just generally want to be doing one or two things. I'm either pushing and trying to ex and pushing and trying to exert pressure on the map by you know getting deep vision, looking to play with my jungler, setting up dives on side lanes, whatever. Or I'm holding the wave in this nice little pocket on my side of the wave and setting up ganks. Again, this very much depends on the the, the game state, depends on how the sides are going, depends on the aggressiveness of my jungler. It also depends on the the kill threat we actually have on this guy in mid lane. But I just felt like right now, Lee Sin's constantly invading, and I felt like very nice, a very the right thing for me to do is just constantly back him up in the jungle like that. And now I know he doesn't have ult, so I'm taking these, these nice little trades onto Ari like this, knowing that she can't really do anything to me. She has no pots, nothing. 
And notice how like every part of my intent, every part of my gameplay on Diner is very, it's so calculated. Like I, I trade when Ari's abilities is down. I, I have the wave in a specific location that makes my threat heightened. I'm constantly thinking about her level of self peel. If she uses her charm randomly or misses a charm, I'm going to go all in. If she doesn't have ultimate, I'm going to be playing aggressive. If she doesn't have flash and ultimate, I'm going to be playing very aggressive. I'm always thinking about the level of threat I have on my opponent. And if you don't think like this when you're playing a champion like Dinah, you're not going to be able to fully abuse her strength. And because your E is a, literally a point and click um, gap closer, it's so important to be able to abuse that. So now I'm working towards my Nash's Tooth. Things are looking really good. And it's great habit to get into if you don't need to use your biscuits. Just sell them because you still get the max mana. Um, yeah, so when I'm coming out of base like this, I always look at mid to see who has tempo. And now, is if Ari gets midway, I'm going to be on top of her pings telling the team that she's missing. I'm looking at the side lane. Where's the vision? Who's winning in the side lane? What's the go here? And always looking at items. Do they have MR? Do they have defensives? You know? And sorry, guys, about the visuals. For some reason, there's this weird coloring effect on this replay for some reason. I don't know what's going on. So now coming back to lane, my jungle is basing. I've got to be a little bit careful. I know that Ari most likely has ultimated up again here. I can still lean to topside. I know that I have both entrances watered, so I'm pretty safe to, to lean on actually both sides, to be honest with you. And a lot of the time, um, like here, I guess my default response was to actually just shove um, because I, I didn't feel like I could look for a, an all-in or anything. So I just started, decided to shove here and lean onto a side just to exert a little bit of pressure here. I mean, if we go back and we look at this, I have a few options. I can just be happy sitting, keeping in the middle for now, occasionally putting cues onto this Ari, whatever. Or I could, like I do, I actually just play, end up playing for the wave, queuing the wave instead of queuing Ari, and then just playing for leaning onto a side. Again, I think in either situation here, um, you can do either. The reason I chose to just play a little bit faster and get the wave in and move is because my jungle wasn't really on the map and I didn't really want to, um, I didn't feel like there was going to be an opportunity for me to trade aggressively onto Ari anyway. So I just wanted to lean. So now this is something that I, in in the game, it didn't feel right for me to do. And, and I want to talk about this concept quickly. And I think it's important on Diana to understand. So, especially on Diana. So look at this. What do we see? Yes, I have a pink ward in, in bot. But what do we see? My jungle's on top side. I have no vision on Elise. Um, and my bot lane's actually losing 2v2. So, this roam is bad for a few reasons. Well, it's bad because if Elise is just in this river here, Ari can collapse on me, Elise can pincer me, and I know I can't take this fight because their bot has move, my jungler's not anywhere to be seen. So, when you're looking to do roams, guys, on, on, especially on Diana, since, like, yes, you are mobile, but you're not, like, Fizz mobile. You're not, you know, you're not, like, someone or a Talon mobile. You're still mobile, but you're not super, super mobile. Generally, what you want to be doing is either knowing that it's going to be a free roam, given that you've got plenty of vision, you know where the enemy jungler is, you know that no one can follow you, it's going to be really easy. But another real, uh, I guess, a thing that can help you, I guess a, a guideline that can help you when you play Diana in terms of roams, is that playing with your jungler is really... It's just a really good th habit to get into. It's like, okay, where is my jungler? If my jungler is looking for a gank topside... If I just roam onto the top side and compliment my jungler's roam, well, if at least counter ganks top, it's not going to be a 2v2. It's going to be a 3v2 because I'm going to be there first and turn that 2v2 into a 3v2. So this is just bad for so many reasons. I'm missing an opportunity top. I'm making myself vulnerable in bot river. I'm not even... I didn't, there's no kill threat bot anyway because, look, it's a Lucian with... He's already got his um, cutlass and my Aphelios has nothing. This is, and my bot lane is actually 0-4. Um, this is just a bad roam right now. So, again, learn from my mistakes here. Don't go for those style of rooms. Um, and and kind of create a mental checklist. Look at that. Look at those trades, guys. Look at these trades. And this is the thing. Okay, so the reason I went for this trade is because I saw Ari use Q on the wave. And this is what I've been seeing, actually, in my coaching sessions a lot in, in gold and silver, is that you see that a lot of the time the enemy will just use their abilities on the wave. And then it's, and this and then the, the person's like, wait, oh, I'm going to use my ability on the wave. No, if the person walks up aggressively and uses the ability on the wave, you should just trade onto them. I know that if Ari E's me, there's no follow-up damage because her Q's down. Her W does no damage. My shield will mitigate that anyway. Look, I, I noticed that and instantly just Q and do a full combo onto her. Look at that. So that was all because if the enemy uses abilities on the wave, don't let them do that. You've got to punish them for that, okay? That's just a really big thing that you guys can actually implement in your own games. 
And now my jungler is looking to do rift topside. Again, I'm kind of hovering bot side just to make sure Elise wasn't diving. That was my intention here. I'm leaning bot side because they've already got the kill top. And if Elise tries to dive bot, I'm going to be able to counter gank it. And I knew that they couldn't really contest Rift Herald anyway. And then what do we know? Elise is bot side here. And the reason I knew Elise was going to be bot side is because Elise didn't show top when Lee Sin... Um, when Lee Sin ganked top, and I thought it was going to be 2v2, but she, Elise didn't show, which said to me in my mind that most likely Elise is actually trading sides of the map and playing towards bot side. So right now, what do I do? I actually ho hover bot side near, thinking that if they dive, I'm going to be able to capitalize. And because I lean out of vision like this, it actually prevents the enemy. They actually had to back off. In low elo, they pro probably continue to go for this dive, in which I can come and clean up. I've got flash, ignite, everything. I could literally get a double or triple kill. Um, and in high elo, they'll just respect, and because, you, you know, I've lent, and this RE most likely pinged me in river, and then the, the bot, three of it, they're like, oh shit, we can't dive bot, and then I end up saving my bot lane's ass there, which is a nice little thing there. And again, I'm just constantly looking to trade onto this guy, look for kills. I'm okay to trade my ultimate for her ultimate. I probably shouldn't have ignited, because I, I thought I could maybe 100 to 0. I wanted to kind of test my limits here, because she was already quite low. I nearly could have killed her if I, my E came off quicker. Look at this, so I, I, Q, E... Alt, if I, if I, if I eat and got my ultimate off after that, I probably maybe could have killed her and then flash auto. She maybe would have died, but who knows? But anyway, I'm, again, I'm happy because Dinah's not as okay. Dinah is quite ultimate reliant, but not as ultimate reliant as as Ari. Ari is extremely ultimate reliant, and I'm happy to burn that flash so so I can play very aggressively, and she would have to play respectively, knowing that I can constantly all in her. And then Elise's bot again. And I know Ari's in base, so I'm able to get a, b a bit of a chunk top side. I know my, I can't gank top, I can't gank bot. And this is a beauty of, of Diner as well, is that you can actually get towers quite fast, given that your, your build path, you actually build Nash's or um, Nash's Tooth and Stinger. This is very, very good for getting um, towers. So now I know that um, Ari doesn't have ultimate, so she's quite vulnerable. Now I just want to lean aside to lean on, so I just I don't even need to base. There's nothing for me to buy. I don't want to sell a Doran's. Um, I'm really happy with this. I'm full HP. No need to, to rush. Uh, no need to fuss. I'm just playing towards my Nash's Tooth here. And what do we do? She has no flash. We're able to go in here and get a nice little kill onto Ari on the back end. And again, this is the thing. Like, again, Ari with I because I blew her ultimate before, and she's just used her only form of self peel as her E. This is a free kill. We know that this is a free kill. Even if she, say she missed her E right here, and Lee Sin wasn't here, I would still jump onto her knowing that she has no self-peel. She would have no E, no ultimate, and maybe should have to blow flash if she even has it. So this is the thing when you play champions like Ari, you need to be, and it's like the same as Lux, same as Ari, you generally only have one form of self-peel, especially when your ultimate's down on Ari, is that, that's your E, or and in Lux's case, it's your Q. So when you use that, you gotta be so certain that you're gonna be very safe. You're gonna be certain that no no jungler's gonna be near. You gotta think that it's an isolated 1v1. And this is the strength of Dinah. This is why, as well, she's so good in a lot of ELOs, because if the, you verse a lot of players who don't know how to who to, how to use their abilities properly. And you'll find in low elo, what I've seen is that these Aries and these abil these champions will just use their abilities on the wave, or they'll just willingly throw out their abilities. You're able to, and then if they miss them, you're able to just capitalize by going onto them. You need, and, and, and this is just, again, normal threat assessment, constant threat assessment, and just a free kill here, guys. And this is strength, and the strength of Dino is that he's so good at punishing that stuff. He has a, a, a double gap closer. Like, what champion? How many champions in the game have a double gap closer? And he's a very simple mechanical champion. That's why I love it. Able to get a nice little thing here. I didn't have my E, unfortunately, so um, I couldn't jump onto that, but we ended up just backing up here. And, I, and then um, Camille was actually on her way down, so we had to just back up here. So I'm like, all right, get out, 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 out. And then nice E, auto attack, auto attack, E, alt, bang, and double kill. Pretty self explanatory there, nothing too special. And then I end up getting mid because I have my stinger, so I'm able to get mid, get the next wave. Oh, okay, this, and I'm going to actually proceed to show you the biggest mistake of the game. And I actually cringe so hard on myself when I made this mistake. So I've got so much gold, I've got 3,000 gold, my jungler's dead, but everyone's dead. This is time for me to reset. You've got the tower, the play's been made, I just need to reset, abuse my strength right now with more of my gold. If I just base right now, the game's free, I've got a huge bounty, I need to be very careful. So I just back up now. What I'm, I'm, And my intention was to just walk up here and just start recalling here. But then what happens, I see Morgana here, and I'm feeling good, you know, I've got, I've got all these kills, I'm super strong, I think I'm the best, so I've got my, all my testosterone's built up. I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm Dinah. 
Flash QE, go, 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 go. Kill, kill, kill. And what do I know? Why is this bad? Well, the 80 carry is missing. I haven't spent any of my gold. I've got a big bounty. My jungler's in base. This is just an absolutely... And I end up blowing my stopwatch as well. My flash, my ult. Oh, I didn't have ult, but all that. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even have ultra ignite. And even if I got the kill, it's not going to do anything, right? So even if I would say we just somehow one-shot this um, Janna and I blew my flash for it. I'm going to have to reset anyway. There's nothing we can get after. We've already got the tower anyway. I'm going to have to just recall, go back to base. We actually don't get any objective or nothing on the back end of it regardless. So really, really learn from my mistake, Dad. And this is what I call, like, why you got to be... Like, you can't let your emotions dictate your gameplay. I was just feeling great here. Too much testosterone. And, you know, it's like, it's like things are going too well. And when things are going too well, you always got to remain to stay focused. Continue to stay focused. Sometimes take a few deep breaths. Always bring it back to... You know, what am I trying to do next? This was just some random opportunistic play that wasn't calculated at all. And 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 if I lose this game, this was the play. I would take full responsibility for the loss of this game just off that play. I've just gave a huge shutdown to this Lucian. And, you know, I deserve to get flamed for that one. That was really, really bad. And this guy said, why'd you flash in? I said, a bad play, my bad. Anyway. Now, so I've got my I've got my Nashes now, which is a huge spike. So Dyna generally has two spikes. The first spike is your Nashes. The second spike is your Zonyas. Once you get Zonyas and Nashes, you'll get out of control. So the beautiful thing, though, with Dyna, and you'll find in a lot of your games, is that not many champions in the game can actually match Dyna in the side lane. So I've, I've got two win conditions versus Ari when I play Dyna. My, my first win condition is obviously just to... I just out... I can just out um, harass him in lane. My, my, my harass is easier to hit. Uh, I have a lot of threat on Ari. She's very reliant on her ultimate. I can burn her ultimate super easy. She doesn't have... Uh, it's very easy for me to just abuse her. But the second ultimate... The second win condition is... Once the game gets to mid game in the side lane... Ari can't... Ari cannot contest me in the side lane. So I'm going to get free unlimited priority as much as I want in the side lane. So I can just push and move... And either deny um, their team CS... Or again create man advantages. <coughs> so again, what do I do? When I'm in base, I constantly, as I'm Diana, I want fights to be played around me. I, I don't want to let this Ari get get um, roams off. So what do I do? Instantly ping exactly where Ari's going. So I don't. I never give Ari a potential to get a roam off. If she has tempo, you need to. If if your mid opponent has tempo, you need to communicate with pings that they're gonna have move off the wave, so they don't uh, they aren't able to make a play. So my intention right now is to just push and move onto a side so we can break a side lane tower. So then I can, um, we can break open the map and then I can actually go on the side lane. That's, so that's generally what I want to be doing. So that's why I'm leaning bot side, thinking that both Dragon is up. Um, most likely to be playing towards um, bot side. I get some nice little deep vision here. I actually end up getting Raptors and that's another thing Diana do, can do. You can actually just seal camps really, really quick, especially once you get your Nashes. And I'm just hovering now in between waves. And I really want to do this dragon. I have, I have so much mid priority. We can just do dragon whenever we want. So I just want to keep mid pushed. And again, if I just keep mid pushed, it's just going to be constantly creating a man advantage. Just leaning onto the side that you want to play towards. And this is going to secure objectives. And this is going to allow my bot lane to be able to push a lot deeper and potentially take better trades. And now I just invade the jungle with my um, with my jungler. We can look for picks, looks for dives. And we're originally going to look for a dive bot, but then Elise shows here. We're able to get a nice little kill onto this Elise. And then we end up continuing our dive here because Ari can't follow. Ari's petrified of walking through the river, uh, walking through the jungle because we can just turn on her whenever um, we want. And what do we do? I don't have my E, so I have to play very slow here. I'm not just rushing in and diving in. I'm playing, and I know that Ari's actually coming, so I'm going to be quite scared. But unfortunately, I'm in this position where um, I didn't have my E. But again, I'm I'm Diana, who's fed, so this is get I'm actually out of control here. So pretty self-explanatory here. And this is exactly what you want to be doing on on Diana. It's just pushing and moving into mid. Once you've broken your mid tower, pushing and moving. And if you're um, if you're fortunate enough that one of your side lanes has a or your bot lane actually has the mid, the bot tower already, then you send them mid, and then you go to the side lane, and you do the exact same thing, push and move. So now they end up getting bot tower, so I'm really, really happy. So I actually say, me side, so I say Soraka bot, me top. So I'm trying to control the lane assignments. This will work more in like higher elo, telling the lane assignments people will listen. People I found do listen in silver and gold, it's just there are some games where they don't listen at all. So now I get my blue, and I'm ready to start heading to top side, because now I want to be able to create a man advantage. 
And here I'm thinking, well, I actually have my Zonyas right now. But the reason I don't just base straight away is because my team looks like they're going to be doing Rift Herald. So it's it's rude for me to just base right now because then the team, the enemy has a, had a would have a potential opportunity for for them to take a flight. So my intention right now is to I really want to get to my second item spike. I have that. I just got to ensure that my team is not going to do anything stupid while I'm in base. So I like to shove out the wave first, make sure that we see them on the map. Hover the Rift Herald just in case, and just hover here. And if they show, I can come to the fight. But if not, I'm pinging. I really want to buy this. I'm even pinging it in the chat. Um, I can buy my Zonya's Hourglass. And then we get Rift Herald. And now, I'm really, really strong. I buy a pink ward. Always need to buy pink wards. I, could, I should actually swap my yellow trinket to a blue trinket, ideally, because it's just going to allow me to push my limits in the side lane a bit better. So that's one mistake I did this game as well. Now we're rifting. So I just group mid. Pretty self-explanatory stuff here. But now, in my mind... Um, I'm really, really strong, and I I just want to skirmish. I just want to skirmish all the time. I'm happy with team fights. I'm happy with side lane. I'm happy with anything right now. This is where you need to um, start pushing your limits. So what do I do? I know on the way through, get camps, because obviously Diana can get camps really quickly. And I know we're Infernal spawning in a minute 40, so I just want to be grouping, getting ready for this fight. Something to also think about, and why coming go to the side lane is really strong, is that if I get the side lane farm... What's also going to happen, well, the great thing about getting pushing and moving is that most of the time you're going to be coming in from a flank. And that's exactly what you want to be doing on Dynas. You want to be pushing and moving and coming in from the flank, which is going to be threatening the back lane and allowing you easier access straight onto the back line. So now I'm just grouping. We're pushing them all the way out. I'm again pushing out the bot lane. And again, no one can really contest me at this point. So what I want to do, I want to create a man advantage. And I know that I don't need to group mid first because my bot lane is actually doing quite well now. And I'm pretty sure they don't need me for control. If the game was a lot closer and my bot lane, you know, maybe they weren't as competent, then I would probably just group mid first, get a little bit of control, allow them to shove out deep, and then go to the side lane. But I felt pretty confident um, in them playing quite safe and appropriately. And then I see the 80 carry, enemy 80 carry and support die, so I just continue to push out, knowing that not really many people can kill me. And Camille tries to kill me, so I get out of the tower range. I miss my Q, unfortunately, but look how strong Dino. I still miss my Q. I use my ultimate, flash the uh, flash his thing, and then end up getting out. Dino has so much outplay potential. It re and, and, and this is the, the beauty. It's like, there's not many champions of the game that can be played to such a high level given he's such simple kit. This is why, and I'm, again, I'm going to constantly reiterate this. This is exactly why I recommend a champion like this. It's so versatile. And it's very simple. Like, there's nothing, there's nothing complicated about his kit at all. So then, fast-forwarding this game a little bit here, start to go to the side lane again, create a man advantage. And again, this is good for two reasons, because, again, I'm going to be... Um, denying them CS, creating a man advantage, or if no, if no one shows, then I'm going to be able to come in from the flank exactly like I do here. So I come in from the flank, cut off Elise's escape path, um, and able to chase down Elise here. And then I'm waiting for my Q, do my ultimate, get another little Q on the back end, and then chase her down. And then this allows us to just get Baron, and then we um, they enemy FF. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to quickly go through the laning phase of another game where I versus a high elo fizz player as well, just to break down what the lane looks like also versus a melee champion. So what we're going to look at now is a Dyna versus fizz vod. So the beauty of Dyna is that you can be played both. She can be played both into a mobile mid mages, long range mid mages, and she can also be played into melee match melee matchups. So she's actually really good into champions like fizz and kiana. That's why I actually think Dyna is a really good blind pick in low elo as well. So generally, again, I don't really want to be straying too far from my strategy, but basically level 1 and 2, I have to understand that I'm weak, and ideally have the wave on my side over here around level 3 so I can take more extended trades. Again, if you're versing a melee matchup, you can actually start W level 1 instead of Q, and just contest them level 1 in the wave so they don't just bully you off too much, and, and they don't, you know, because Fizz, if, if Fizz can actually start E and just E on top of you, but if I have W, then um, Fizz can't really, I don't, I'm not really too bothered because my shield's just going to absorb a lot of that damage. I'm versing Elise, so you'll see me in a second start to lean to the bot side of the lane. So I actually pressed tab just to confirm what the jungle was, and I'm like, oh, okay, it's an Elise. Elise has a bit of level, level 2 potential, so I end up leaning on the bot side like this. So I don't really want to give Elise or any jungler any opportunity to blow my flash or anything in the early game, since um, my I, I really value my flash and my staying healthy in the early game to be able to get at least my double Dorans. And notice here the, the strength of level you know, W level 1. If they walk up to CS, you can just start your W and start auto-attacking them, and they can't really contest you. 
And again, it's going to be a lot of the same thing. It's going to be, yes, you're probably going to actually get a, a bit more early pressure and I'll have a lot more roam threat when you verse another melee. But it's basically the same thing. You want to, you know, wait, to poke with Q, poke with Q, um, hold the wave ideally e either in the middle on your, on your side and create opportunities to look for QE trades onto them and, you know, dash onto them. And it can be really, I guess, sometimes like people feel really, they feel the need to just constantly queue them and the minion wave. I'm really careful about that. I really don't want the wave to be in this position unless my intention is to push and move. I don't want to be stuck there just because I mismanaged my wave. I always want to have some form of intention. So at the moment, I actually just want to ideally keep the wave in the middle of the lane and or on my side. Look at this. I'm really, really happy with the way things are going right now. Poking this Fizz because he eat my creep. So I know this is kind of even it out a little bit. And now I'm level three. So now... Again, I feel very, very strong, and I feel very capable of um, of taking a trade whenever I want. So I get a nice little QE trade, and I'm really happy with these extended trades like this because I have Conquer. Remember, so I'm able to get a nice little trade off. And again, the the I guess the theme of playing Diner into these Fizz matchups is that you don't really want to be playing like a bitch. You want to be trading back, knowing that you have your shield strength, you have Conqueror and these extended trades, and you can chase them down with double dashes. And look at this. Um, Notice how, even if the waves, like, notice how Fizz walks up here, which the wave's kind of in the middle. Now he E's away, like, or just Q's through me, sorry, and I can just chase down and get another auto. If this is all the way up here, I wouldn't be able to dash and get that extra auto, which is really, really big in terms of trades. And that's why I love to have create room and create space in the lane for me able to play quite aggressive. And, and create space in order for me to chase them down the lane. That's why, and that's, it also complements your kid, it complements everything about Dyna, and especially since you take Conqueror. So now I've got this big wave built. What do I can do with this wave? I can actually just straight up reset, get a second Dorans, because it's going to take so long for Fizz to get the CS. Or, again, depending on the situation, like you'll find, um, especially in solo queue at the moment, there's going to be a lot of early skirmishes, especially since it's a Rek'Sai versus Elise jungle, and it's a Kiana versus Mordekaiser top, so I can assume that there's a lot of action. So I'm leaning onto top side, knowing that that's where my jungler is, and I'm looking to just complement this 2v2 top side. And this is what you'll find on Diana a lot of the time. Around level 3, level 4, after you've pushed them out, you're going to be able to, to attend any of these skirmishes. And these skirmishes are all so good for you. Because Diana again, is one of those champions that excels in these chaotic, I guess, skirmishes that you get to first. So, um, Fizz, the first thing I check is how many corrupting pots do we ha does he have. He actually has no corrupting pots. So I end up getting a nice little deep ward just to see where Elise ends up pathing. But this is looking really, really good for me. So now my intention is, okay, he actually doesn't have teleport. He has ignite. So I want to keep him in the lane. I don't want to give him a free reset. So either I want to slow build a wave into him or make him so low that he just has to reset anyway because he's scared of getting solo killed. So that's why I'm not just spamming my abilities on the wave right now. I'm just leaning to the top side knowing that's where my vision is. So I'm just poking with Q, try not to use my poke through the creeps. If he stands out here, I'm happy to Q him because that's not going to be queuing many of those creeps. And I'm happy to just slowly push this. And I, I think I make a decision here. I either start to hard push it just to look for a reset. I actually can't remember what I do. So let's see how they, I play this out. So I believe... The, this is the good thing about slow pushing though, is the, the bigger, the, when you slow push, it's going to be create a big, like a massive wave, and that's going to be able to, to either, um, it's going to prevent him from trading onto you because your wave is going to be really big, and it's also going to give you the ability to, once it's crashed and Fizz has to react to this big wave, you're going to have a lot of time to either roam again if you want to, or, you know, more than likely not just actually get a reset off. So I end up just poking, and then I see a least dive bot, so I end up trying to get the wave in so I could potentially look to, um, to impact the map doing something because when Elise shows like that and doing these early dives generally I need to do something in response either get a reset to get back on the map or back up my jungler somewhere so when I see Elise I actually press tab and I saw that he had 15 CS which means that he actually hasn't got bot scuttle yet and like, what do I see so I actually and I don't recommend doing this all the time but I end up using my second ward and I, don't, I hate using two wards at the same time but this is actually a very selfless ward the reason I'm doing this is that because I know Elise is going to be walking up into river after this gank getting the scuttle and then looking to do something and I'm going to be able to see if does he path this way does he path up here it's going to help my team a lot generally i wouldn't recommend this because again if you put two wards on the map at the same time there's going to be a period where you're going to have no vision on the map at all it's going to be very difficult for me to lean onto a side having no vision so now anyway, i get that ward i get that thing and i saw him level three being quite low so what i was actually thinking was instead of using my 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 initial thought was instead of using that that built wave to get a reset off, I was actually going to look to potentially cheese this Elise in River, knowing that I think he didn't have sums from that top fight, and then also I have Ignite, I think I could potentially cheese him. But this came at a cost. It came at a cost of, of Fizz being able to kind of shove out, which is a little bit annoying. 
So I could have got a free reset there. So that was the, the that was the sacrifice I made. I made a sacrifice to keep um, get vision on a lease instead of getting a reset. And again, I don't know how in a high elo that's something I'd do, but in low elo I would not play that self less. I would play very much more selfish. And I actually saw um, Thresh walk into river thinking that we could potentially collapse on this guy. That's why I went for this skirmish here. And again, these skirmishes are pretty good for me. And then actually Blitzcranks come, so I'm like, oh shit, this is a bit sketchy. So I end up um, just taking the lantern and uh, getting out. So I end up fast forwarding, they end up chasing me a little bit, and I saw Fizz mid, so knowing this is a bit of a, like a 3v, 3v2 for a little bit, end up getting another kill. Luckily Blitz misses his hook, but this is really, really good for me. And then um, he ends up trying to go for a dive, and I get another kill. So I'm 2 and 0 right now. So what do I do with this? I know that Fizz um, is... Going, I actually, I have tempo. I have tempo and fizz, and the reason I know I have tempo and fizz is because he's still in lane trying to deny me CS, and I'm already recalling. So he hasn't even started his recall yet. So I know that I have tempo. That's very important for for me to understand. So I get my second Dorans, end up working towards my Nash's tooth. Sell my um, biscuit for boots. That's a bit of a risky one. I could have gone boots. I could have gone pink. I graded for the. I actually. In hindsight, I probably should have got a pink because pink's a very important Diana since you want to be translating your pressure around the map or creating enough vision for you to be to um, to know you have enough time to take those extended trades. That's why I really think pinks are super important. So I know I have tempo mid. So what do I do? I make a choice. I can either slow build a wave, which is a the more patient option, or I can fast push and look for a, a sneaky. Um, a sneaky roam, but given my jungler was still getting his red buff and we didn't have too much vision I had no trinkets. I just wanted to do a slow push. So now this is going to give my time to finish a few of his camps And then it's going to make a lot more sense for me to make a play now knowing that Fizz is going to, it's going to take a lot longer for Fizz to make to collect this wave um, Now, you know Rek'Sai is back on the map not just farming jungles so he's going to be grabbing Elisa's attention as well and I end up seeing Kiana quite extended here and end up trying to go for a nice little roam onto this Kiana. In hindsight, I actually probably should have leaned bot because that was the side that Dragon was up. It was a side that we just got kills on bot, and it was the side where my jungler is. So I think leaning bot would have been a lot better. For some reason, I just saw just this Kiana so overextended, and I love getting Mordekaiser fed because when Mordekaiser gets fed, the game just feels boomed. But um, I think I actually probably, in hindsight, should have roamed bot because then, look, I, I think I would have been able to clean them up bot. But I end up getting a nice little kill here. Onto this Kiana, pretty self-explanatory, and this is exactly what you what you want to be doing on Dyna. You want to have a clear intention with your ways. You want to be holding the wave on your side and setting up ganks and looking to take extended trades, or you want to be pushing, you getting deep vision and pushing and moving. And then Fizz kills my laner. So what do I do as a response? I use that opportunity to push and move. And again, nothing too special. Fast forwarding, it's just the same thing. Basically, I'm, I'm either doing one or two things. Just fast forwarding this game a little bit. Oh, this was kind of annoying. I actually want to talk about this a bit. So what do I see? Fizz ends up using his E. And I have vision here. My jungler's in river. I thought it was just, this was just an isolated 1v1. So what does it mean when the enemy uses an E like this? He used his E because he saw me use my Q. So my Q's down. So at high elo, everyone punishes cooldowns. So he saw me use my Q. So he's like, oh, I can just E on him. But the beauty of Dyna is that you don't need your Q a lot of the time. You can just ult and take his auto attack W and then wait for your Q because it's on such a short cooldown and then chase him down um, with your QE. So now what I saw after he uses E, I know that's his only form of escape. That's his main form of self peel. So I'm like, all right, if you want to you take that fight, I'm just going to ult you. Auto attack, auto attack, ult to drag him in a little bit. My Q's in one second. And I would have been able to kill this guy if Elise didn't flash. I, didn't, I thought it was an isolated 1v1. But the reason I used this as an example was... It's just a beautiful example of both laners, me and Fizz, both abusing each other's cooldowns. If you can just implement this alone in your Diana games, you're going to see a lot of success. You're going to have a lot of success. So what I wanted to really highlight in this video is just all the mid fundamentals with, with Diana. I think she's a really, really solid pickup if you're in low elo because, you know, you can practice timing your Q with the CS. You can t um, practice, I guess, identifying self-peel and punishing the lack of self-peel or punishing the enemy's cooldowns with all inning and down the long lane. You can also test around with, you know, side lane awareness and pushing and moving, but also or wave manipulation. We're holding the wave on your side, chasing them down the lane. There's so many ways. Just because because Dyna has a very, very simple kit doesn't mean you can't do complicated things with Dyna. So again, using macro on an assassin like this, it's like putting 
using, I guess, the mechanic side of thing, but also an, uh, like understanding the limits of Dyna plus the macro side of things, you're going to be really able to reach the limits of Dyna and have a lot of success on it. So let me know if this video was helpful. If you have any questions more about Dyna, feel free to let me know in my Discord or in the comments below. And then I'll be, again, continuing my Unranked to Challenger video. I just wanted to do this in the meantime. So cheers. Thanks for watching.